This is the Wave DX, a new XLR microphone designed by Elgato. It uses a dynamic capsule with a wide cardioid pickup pattern and it's priced at just $100. But as it's Elgato's first XLR microphone, have you Elgato to get one or should you just wave the DX goodbye? So let's get this unboxed and mounted so we can hear exactly how it sounds and compare it to some already established dynamic microphones around that same price point like the Rode Pod mic and the Go XLR mic. So for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna be speaking directly into the Elgato Wave DX so you get a nice long example of exactly how it sounds. For full context, I've got the microphone running directly into the Elgato Wave XLR as my interface, but all voice and post-processing effects have been disabled so you can hear exactly how it sounds out the box. I've got the gain set to around 42 decibels, which has me hitting around minus 12 dB in OBS. Speaking of out of the box, what you get included with the microphone is a removable swivel mount, two different thread adapters in both 3 8 and 5 8 for mounting to pretty much any microphone stand, as well as a quick start guide. It's worth noting that as with most XLR microphones, this doesn't come with any kind of XLR cable or desk mount included. Elgato did send me like a branded XLR cable, which I imagine you'll probably be able to purchase um, separately on their website, but any kind of XLR cable is gonna work. The microphone enclosure and swivel mount both feel like they're made out of a robust metal. There are a couple of small areas of plastic too, but this certainly feels like a step up in build quality when compared with the Wave 1 and Wave 3 USB microphones. There's no give when applying pressure to the outer mesh pop filter, and there's absolutely no looseness in the XLR connection either. The swivel mount can also be moved to either side of the microphone, so this little Elgato logo simply pops off to reveal another mounting point, and then you can unscrew the swivel mount, attach it to the other side, and then attach the logo pin to cover up the mounting point. So this should allow you to mount the Wave DX in pretty much any orientation from either below with a low profile arm or above with a traditional mic arm. The Wave DX is advertised as having a wide and forgiving acceptance angle for its cardioid pickup pattern, so it should still sound good for your voice even if your microphone technique isn't perfect. To test this, I'm gonna speak into the microphone at various different angles. This is me speaking directly into the end of the Wave DX. Now speaking at roughly 30 degrees to the Wave DX. Now speaking at roughly 60 degrees to the Wave DX. And finally now speaking at 90 degrees to the Wave DX. The Wave DX is also advertised as having a dual layered pop filter. So let's do some plosive tests to see how well that performs. Katie likes cookies that she tells Ted to try. Peter has a puppy that he should keep washed and dry. Sophie looks sassy with her crazy zigzag dye. Katie likes cookies that she tells Ted to try. Peter has a puppy that he should keep washed and dry. Sophie looks sassy with her crazy zigzag dye. Right, so time for some comparisons with some similarly priced dynamic XLR microphones. And for that, I've chosen to compare it with the TC Helicon Go XLR mic, which we recently reviewed on the channel. This retails for about $150, as well as the old beast, I forget how heavy this thing is, the Rode Pod mic, uh, which retails for $100. So the exact same price as the Wave DX. This is the Wave DX from Elgato, a dynamic XLR microphone that retails for $100. This is the Go XLR mic from TC Helicon, a dynamic XLR microphone that retails for $150. And finally, this is the Pod mic from Rode, a dynamic XLR microphone that retails for $100. All right, let's whack the cans on and see how they compare. This is the Wave DX from Elgato. This is the Go XLR mic from TC Helicon. This is the Pod mic from Rode. All right, so I think we can all agree that all three microphones sound pretty good straight out of the box and they're pretty comparable. I would say that the Wave DX and the Pod mic sound the most similar. They're both well balanced, smooth low end and decent presence on the high end. When comparing them with the Go XLR mic, I feel like the Go XLR mic almost sounds a little bit muddy. Certainly nothing that you couldn't change with a little bit of EQ, uh, but certainly hearing them back to back, I think the Wave DX and the Pod mic stand out to me. But in all honesty, you could make any of these microphones flourish just by playing around with a bit of EQ, which of course you can do through OBS Studio or through some software like Wavelink or through some hardware EQ like on the Go XLR or Rodecaster Pro. Usually when I review Elgato products on this channel, I feel like the hardware is good, but it's really the software that takes things to the next level. If you think about how good Wavelink is for the USB Wave microphones, or the number of different plugins that you can get from the plugin store for the Stream Deck, those are the bits that really take that hardware to the next level. This is just a very good and well-priced XLR microphone. It doesn't do anything through software. It doesn't have any controls on it at all. It's just, a very good XLR microphone, and I think for $100, you can't really go too wrong. 
It's been a good few years now that I've been recommending the Rode PodMic as my favorite dynamic microphone at that $100 price range. So it's really nice now that there is a comparable microphone. And as silly as it sounds, I honestly think it probably comes down to which one you'd prefer to have in your webcam frame. What do you like the look of more? Because they're so comparable in sound. And as I said, you can really make either of them flourish just by playing around with EQ, no matter what your voice sounds like. If you want to make your microphone sound better and you're using Wavelength, I'd highly recommend checking out my video here on VST plugins for the Wavelink software. If you don't use an Elgato microphone, but you still want to make your microphone sound better, I've of course got another tutorial that covers adding those filters in OBS Studio, which you can check out here. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.